Welcome to the Field of Streams, where I, your host, Janine McRae, bring you the tiny thoughts that stream from my brain and present them to you as though they're a top-notch slab of highly sought-after American walnut that would make for a magnificent handcrafted wooden dining table if you were an artisan, but you're not. So it'll sit in the back shed for the next 40 years and end up in an estate sale where someone will score an absolute scorcher of a bargain long after you've dropped off your perch. Mmm, cycle of life. Now, I can't promise you much with these seeds, but I can promise you this. I won't keep you long. A promise like that deserves a follow, don't you think? Tap that follow button. Every time you do, a writer gets a pencil. So, in inspired by terms, this week's post was a twofer. One, I read an article in a newspaper about a starological, that's not a word, formation that they found in space, which is where stars live, not Hollywood. This particular formation appears as a question mark in space. Bing! That's where I had the idea for the last line. Even the universe has questions. But that, mm, that's only half an idea. As luck would have it, I had also been reading the book Art is Life, which contains a bunch of essays from the Pulitzer Prize-winning art critic, Jerry Saltz. In one of these essays, he was talking about Steve McQueen, that's the artist and director, not the smouldering cool guy actor who jumps motorcycles over fences. And the essay was talking about one of McQueen's videos where he had projected all 115 images from the Voyager missions, which were the images that were supposed to represent us as humans to aliens, should they be able to find these images and interpret them correctly. So we've got two things, a question mark in space and the golden record. That's what they called the thing that held the images and some sounds and music and messages, etc. on the Voyager. That is the definition of a black hole for my brain to fall into and write something about. Basic premise? How will you be heard? And who will play your song? Who are the aliens? There's one footnote at the end about the golden record, but without any further launch delays, let's strap ourselves to a rocket and explore the space of this week's piece called You Are the Golden Record. Quote, to the makers of music, all worlds, all times. End quote. You are the golden record, waiting to be played. There you are, affixed to the exterior of your own private voyager, catching the light of far-off galaxies and spinning in celestial glory in your search for a phonograph. Within each groove of your golden surface lay hidden messages, the images of your being and the songs and sounds of your existence, embedded, emboldened, imbued. You are a carefully curated collection of the most reverent, most enigmatic, most true representations of yourself, waiting to be unlocked and held in the willing hands or tentacles or particles of life form who encounter you. Reaching beyond the edges of your bubble, this galaxy of the daily, you are presenting and representing with bright hope and eager value. Ready to be calibrated, all your perfections and scratches with noise keen for release upon the dramatic drop of some needle upon you. Your spacecraft spins continuously and patiently in the cosmic rinse, seeping toward the boundary of time. No method to its trajectory, just out and out and optimistically puttering, seeking the hemline of this system to unravel the glorious garment of the next. Marvellous golden record. You. Yearning to be played in the listening lounge of strange beings, danced to and top-tend and placed upon the holy moly wall of eternity's collection. Secrets, clues and speeds of life, the playing of, out, beyond and on what you stand for, who you are, and how you function in strange atmospheres. All is contained within the golden record of you. But for now, all the void sees is all shine. You are waiting, anxiously shimmering and stoically still, anticipating the moment when you will be broadcast upon the turntable of an alien mind, to be noticed and understood with a body augmented by the receivership of your signal not as the representative of a whole species, but of you, just you, all you, and golden, 
the individual EP with a destiny to be found by a crate-digging extraterrestrial lifophile. Your vessel tilts its head in the eerie silence, stretching for understanding so as to deliver its bounty to the willing. The eventual burst of sound and chatter waits patiently in the quiet and in the seeking. You float by on a moonbeam, a golden record on a celestial trek. The instructions etched on your cover have been carved by thought, a simple fistful of lines and marks pointing to the I am here, come find me moment. They are a test to stump the wrong, but enlighten the correct. Will the aliens who find you crack your code? Do decoder rings exist in the next system over? Do they have the keys to your door to crack it open and see your true height and dimensions and the scale of your imagination as it relates to time? Are your secret messages destined to ever be read? You hear your own heart beating at the centre of your disc. You are a pulsar. You are a star. You are the golden record waiting to be played. On and on the voyage continues, spinning before you are spun through the dark and dust, through the light and life, and on and on to find your perfect platter. You are on a mission to have your enclosed stylus placed upon the message of you, hoping you will be received with inquisitive love and that your alien discoverer will guess the correct RPMs to play your song at your chosen speed, that your alien will feel your true groove. What will they hear when they first drop that needle? What will they see? Will your intent be known in the instant of a crackle? Will they unravel the mystery of your diversity of thought, of your life, of your culture in that moment? Or will you be crushingly misunderstood? One cosmic miscommunication played out in the expanse of the heavens. What extraterrestrial wars will you start with your spin? What reflections on their galaxy will you domino effect into being? Do they send records too? Will you be able to play them? Perhaps they will take one look at your images and listen to your orchestra and declare you childish and dumb. Do aliens have children? Are we their children? Do they dare to know as we dare to be known? Questions for the discovery. But for now there is only the outreach. The stretching of your curiosity cable across the particles of time and light and space and mind. The golden record on a mission to enlightenment. To teach or be taught, to be peaceful with a wave and a friendly tone, you, a universal greeting and offering of love, by your own interpretation. You are aching to have the recognition of existence, to prove that you were alive, are alive, and did things in the moment of your sparking. Your content must be known by someone so that you may know yourself. You must be played. It cannot be that you became a release that did not chart. It cannot be your destiny. This is why you are putting yourself out there, into the universe, into space. You are the golden record, waiting to be played. Once unlocked, you will be revealed. Your playlist will be complete. The image of you is sharp and clear. Each image has purpose. There are no images of you staying too late at the office, no out-of-focus pictures of you ignoring your partner while you doom-scroll at the table, no sad on the couch with popcorn debris on your chest as you weep for what's lost. You have been careful in your curation. This is how I run. This is how I jump. This is how I take the chance and give the love and make the good and honour the vessel of my being. This is all the matter at the core of me that makes the matter of me matter. Think, golden record. Think of the worlds you may inhabit once you reach the end of your mission. To be played by strangers in the living rooms of the void. What shriek will they make at your first note? Or will you be a concussive thump felt only in the eardrums and echoed in the throat of nothingness? What is the destiny of you, golden record? Where will you be broadcast? Is there an Easter egg etched in the soft belly of your dead wax? On and on until the beeps are gone, a quiet you will interrupt once played. This is my song, you say, and it trills and surges and strings the heart of you toward alien apparatus. Another song. It is louder and more frantic and races toward a crescendo. Now, sounds of life. Your life. Here is your wail sound. Your heart when it is happy. Your heart when you are running. Your heart when you are sleeping. And this 
your heart held gently in the heart of another. It trembles at the treble. More and louder and with added bass. This is what you sound like when you're hungry. This is thinking. Who you are and were and will be. Your desire, your ambition, your hope. Life making noise. Listen, alien, listen. This is me. But who are you really, Golden Record? Did you think this through? How did you settle upon those 115 images embedded in your grooves? Who decided on the runtime in the presence of the unknown? Can you really be summed up by any measure of time? What is your opening gambit, your greeting? What is your stratosphere, your atmosphere, the outer limits of your truth? You are projecting your expectation and taste upon the nothingness and hoping it finds something to believe in, but will the aliens understand? The quiet stretches on before the dumb realisation strikes the shell of your vessel. You blink in slow fascination at this revelation, a eureka moment in the bathtub of space. The edge of this system, golden record, is the end of this sentence. You, golden record, are the alien you have been searching for. Blow the dust off your own stylus, wipe your surface with an anti-static cloth, drop the needle and listen for your message. Listen up and play yourself. Will you learn or teach? Which way will your volume go? Is your sound bright and alive? You are your own decoder ring to the secret sound of you. You will not find your answers or your voice in seeking validation from other galaxies. The sounds you seek are right here on Earth. Do not ask the universe, Golden Record, for even it has questions. And there you have it, today's episode. A small note about the quote at the start. To the makers of music, all worlds, all times. This was written by Carl Sagan's friend, Timothy Ferris. Uh, it was etched on the record, but the compliance officer at NASA rejected the first test pressing because the inscription was not included on the original specs. So they almost took it off. Sagan had to appeal to NASA admins to keep it, arguing that the inscription would be the sole example of human handwriting aboard the vessel. He won. They got a waiver permitting the record to fly with those nine words on the golden record. And the rest, as they say, is history. Or is it really the future? Because it's still heading out there into the unknown. Ah, space. For more backstory on how they actually assembled the collection of materials for the Golden Record, there's a story in The New Yorker written by Timothy Ferris, who wrote that line, and I've put a link in the description. And that's all for today. I hope you come back for more. These little missives are designed to inspire creative folk to get out there and make something of their own. If you enjoyed this episode, please follow the podcast so that you never miss one and sign up to read my writing at janinemccrae.substack.com. But for now, I'll leave you with this. Love what you love, and I'll see you out there making stuff. <laughs>